so with a imminent and expected possible ban on fracking, can you kind of uh, quickly one summarize uh, what fracking is and how important it is uh, for our, our state and our county here in Kern? Thank you, Alex. And of course, as we know, this governor has not been shy on his intentions to phase out oil and gas industry. Um, and so this uh, rumored uh, release, um, certainly whether it deals with hydraulic fracturing, which we which really is a well stimulation technique to improve the ability of oil to flow under uh, from the underground to the surface, whether it's about that or whether it's about something broader that phases out all oil and gas production. It's really important that we talk about what that means to places like Kern County, which of you know, is uh, as a county, the seventh largest oil producer in the state of California. And I think what's what's really unfortunate from my perspective is, is this continued ignoring of science and facts and to instead governed by what appears to be this, this philosophy of bans and mandates and fiats, which frankly, one could deem as unlawful. And so we're hoping whatever approach is taken, whatever we hear is taken, um, we hope it's not a, a, an approach that's short-sighted and that frankly disincentivizes the investment in clean technology for us to decarbonize the products that we know all California and communities need. And so, uh, you know, banning any kind of oil production, whether it's well stimulation, which is about 20% of California's production, or whether it's, uh, it's more than that. When you think about what does that mean? What does banning or phasing out the oil and gas industry mean for this state? And what it means is that if you propose that, you must be supporting crude oil being imported from Ecuador, Saudi Arabia, and Iraq. And you must also be saying you're for putting it on marine tankers going over sensitive waterways into the port of LA and Long Beach in the Bay Area, which are already congested. And you must also be saying you are for rail traffic through very sensitive communities. Because one thing, Alex, we have 40 million people in the state that for the foreseeable future must move. Light duty cars, medium duty cars, trucks, and, and, and every kind of mobility we have is dependent on crude oil being turned into gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel. And that's for the foreseeable future. So we're not, as you know, as an industry in any way opposed to the transition. We understand where, where we are going, not only in the state and the nation, and we're part of that, we're all over it. But I, I don't understand, what I don't understand is any kind of, and, and again, we haven't seen it, we're gonna see it probably today, but what I don't understand is how do you support climate change? How, do you, how does the governor support climate change and, and take an action that every result is increasing greenhouse gas emissions by marine tankers, rail, what have you, versus producing it under the strictest environmental standards in the state of California, losing jobs and revenue during an economic recovery and just having this kind of an impact to the families and workers throughout the state of California when we need it the most. That, that I'm troubled by, I'm quite troubled by. So again, Alex, we don't know what it's going to say, but um, I do know that we, we better have a process where frankly, we can talk through whatever this looks like and not have it through some kind of an executive order or a press release or what have you, because I think if we're gonna solve any of this, right? We've all got to come to the table and do it together because why? There's just too much at stake. Like everything depends on how we do this. And so we'll see. I hope I'll be able to talk to you, Alex, even more after it comes out, because then we'll have the details of what, what it really says. And then we can talk in more about, about what that means. Absolutely. And, the, you know, just recently there was the, the ban on fracking that was struck down by lawmakers. So why is it that this could just completely move forward this week? Um, you hit the point, Alex, exactly. So SB 467 was a democratic process in the legislature, and the result was that they didn't move forward with it for all of the reasons I just explained. And so as a result, 
that didn't fit into what the governor has promised in this area. And so that's why we believe he is taking this action. And again, I think a better way to do, do any of these kinds of major initiatives is to bring the parties together and formulate a plan that makes sense for everybody that balances the environment, the economy and social equity, but that you plan together, not in a press release that then we have to react to. So I think that's my disappointment is that we're not able to come together and actually talk about this and, and in a way that doesn't impact negatively all of the things that I said. And most importantly, Alex, the families and communities that rely on these products every single day. In families that do, you know, uh, a lot of families have, especially right here in Kern County, um, are, that's how they're making their living, you know, working uh, in the oil industry and fracking. Um, what would be the, the job loss impact from banning fracking? Yeah, and, and again, frack, we call it well stimulation technique because that's really what it is. Uh, the rest of the nation does it very different than we do here in California. So we always have to remind ourselves of that. But that being said, we're talking, you know, thousands and thousands of jobs, you know, up to 50,000 jobs that are dependent on, on just this. And even more so 150,000 if it were to go beyond well stimulation, which we don't know, we'll see what they're going to propose. But there is, it, it is a huge amount of impact on as you know, as well-paying jobs. What we pay in this industry are far above the average of the state of California. And so families depend on that. These, aren't, these are not just jobs, they're careers, right? These are careers and they're good careers and they're safe careers. And SB4, as you know, which was passed in 2013, made sure all of this was safe, right? We put all those provisions in place and we're complying with all of them. And so that's why, We'll see what comes out, um, but I'll have a lot more to talk to you about when it does, because then I'll tell you exactly what the specifics of what they plan to do will have on the impacts of Kern County and the state. And you know, how, how sure are we that this is going to happen today? I know there was talk of it happening yesterday, um, but um, I guess what makes uh, a lot of people so sure that it's, it's happening today? You know, I don't think we're ever sure, right? I mean, it's politics. So who, who knows if it will or won't? I mean, you saw the two stories that came out yesterday suggesting there would be something. And so um, I just think the pressures uh, around this issue, I would not be surprised if we don't see something today. And so that's why, you know, we're, re you know, thank you for reaching out to at least begin to understand what the implications could be. And then we'll know definitely what the implications are once we see what's being proposed.